Hey friends, this is Michael Bohm with Youth Apologetics Training. Today we're going to keep going with this series about Seventh-day Adventist beliefs. And today we're going to talk about a few things, but we're going to start off by looking at Michael the Archangel. I, I mentioned earlier that Seventh-day Adventists believe that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. Now, really quick, I want to make a distinction here because some people think that that means the Seventh-day Adventists do not believe that Jesus is God. Uh, and, they, and rather that Seventh-day Adventists believe that Jesus is a created being. And that's not what they mean. That's not what they believe. Uh, just to be fair, because I want to portray this correctly, Seventh-day Adventists believe that uh, Michael the Archangel is basically Christ pre-incarnate. Okay, so in the Old Testament where we have these uh, theophanies, where many Christians believe that, that Jesus was showing up in the Old Testament, in those cases, uh, it was Michael the Archangel. Now, friends, there is nothing from the Bible that can be pointed at to support this claim. There's absolutely nothing. But, uh, as many of these movements, when you have a movement that claims to be getting revelations from God, uh, you will have these new types of teachings, whether they can be supported from the Bible or not, really makes no difference. If you have a good charismatic leader who is claiming to be getting words from God, they can say what they want, uh, and especially if it doesn't contradict in, in blatant ways the Word of God, they'll get away with it and people will believe it. But most of the time, even when it does contradict the Word of God, the people still pick up that ball and run with it because they, they believe in their leader. So, Ellen G. White, she says this, As Christ and the angels approach the grave. So, in this little passage here that she's talking, we're making reference to Jude 9, where Michael the archangel uh, is confronting Satan over Moses' body. Now look at this. As Christ and the angels approach the grave. So, already we're seeing that Christ is, is Michael. Satan and his angels appeared at the grave and were guarding the body of Moses, lest it should be removed. As Christ and his angels drew nigh, Satan resisted their approach, but was compelled by the glory and power of Christ and his angels to fall back. Satan claimed the body of Moses because of his one transgression, but Christ meekly referred to his father, saying, The Lord rebuke thee. Right Again, yeah, we're looking at Jude. Uh, there's only one chapter in Jude, verse 9, uh, and it says this. It says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. All right, so Ellen G. White is teaching that Michael the archangel is in fact... Jesus. Now, by the way, since we've been talking a lot about the clear word Bible, in their Bible it says it this way, in contrast to these ungodly men is the Lord Jesus, also called Michael the Archangel, again, that, that nowhere, nowhere in the Greek do you see that uh, phrase, okay, uh, for he is over the entire angelic host and on it goes. But anyway, it says Jesus, also called Michael the Archangel. Well, friends, this one's kind of an odd one to refute because, well, there's not a whole lot of scriptures that refute it because, well, who in the world actually would believe this anyway? Now, I, okay, I didn't mean that in an insulting way, but, I mean, there's nothing, absolutely nothing in the scriptures to suggest that Michael the archangel is Jesus. Uh, we, we know this, uh, the angelic host was created by God. Okay, so if Michael the archangel was Jesus, we have a problem because that would make him a created being. Now, again, let me reiterate, the Seventh-day Adventists do not believe that Jesus is a created being. But that is a problem because all the angels were created beings. Uh, just as a side note, the Jehovah's Witnesses also believe that Jesus is Michael the Archangel, and they do, this is the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower, they do believe that Jesus is a created being. 
uh, and they reject the divinity of Christ. And the Seventh-day Adventists, they don't believe that Jesus was created, uh, and they do believe that Jesus is divine, that he is God. Okay, so there is a massive difference there. Uh, first and foremost, it should be mentioned that nowhere, and I mean nowhere in church history, do you hear of any Jews or uh, early church fathers or anybody until we start approaching the 1800s, uh, nobody believed that Jesus was Michael the Archangel. And I mean nobody. All right, that doesn't automatically mean that the belief is wrong because nobody else believed that. But I'm just saying, uh, the, the the deck is stacked against them at this point because there again, there's no indication at all whatsoever from the Word of God that that is the case. So what do we know? What can we say from the scriptures that would show that Michael is not Jesus? All right, well, I already mentioned one thing: uh, the angels were created beings. You look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And when when the Bible here is speaking about host, we are definitely talking about these created angelic beings. Well, let's turn to Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And in this passage, we see Jesus being contrasted with the angels. Jesus is being shown to be so much more superior than the angels. Again, well, guys, okay, this is an argument from silence, but I think the silence would be screaming at this point. If Jesus was Michael the archangel, this would be a perfect time for God to point that out, right? Uh, I mean, it would be a very perfect time easy time to point that out, but we don't see that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 through 8, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whenever you see an angel uh, showing up and somebody falling down in front of them and worshiping them in the Bible, they are quick to say, hey, don't worship me. I- I'm a creative being just like you. You're not to worship angels. But here we see that Jesus, he is worshipped, and even all the angels worship him. In verse 7, and of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. All right. So all that to say, Jesus is clearly shown to be something different than the angels. And even the angels fall down and worship him. But we see in the scriptures where we are not to worship angels. Now, let's come back around and look at that statement made by Ellen White, where she says, you know, in Jude 1.9, she's speaking of Jude 1.9, and she says this, but Christ meekly referred to him, referred him, him being Satan, Christ meekly referred him to his father, saying, the Lord rebuked thee. Now, in this scripture, we see that Michael, when you actually look at the real Bible, uh, Michael is confronting Satan about the fact that Satan wants to take Moses' body. And Michael says, the Lord rebuked thee. You don't see any mention of Jesus here. You see Michael saying, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, if this was Jesus, uh, Jesus is God. Ellen G. White wants to say Christ meekly referred Satan to his father. Uh, But that's not what we see in the scriptures. Like, for example, when you look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, when Jesus is confronting Satan on a different issue... Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. serve." Okay, so Jesus is not afraid 
to confront Satan. He's not afraid to tell Satan off, basically, okay? So are we to believe that in one scripture, Jesus rebukes Satan, but in another scripture, he just meekly tells Satan, the Lord rebuke thee? I don't think so, guys. So, like I said, you know, you can't make a real strong case that Jesus is not Michael the Archangel, but you can't make any case at all using the scriptures that he is Michael the Archangel. You simply can't do it because it's not there. Now, the clear word Bible, if you're using that perverted version of the Bible, uh, well, okay, fine. It does say it in there, but that's not what the original texts say. Not at all. So we know this. Angels are created beings. Jesus is not a created being. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. Uh, Jesus is shown to be different than the angels. As in, he's not a created being. He is higher than the angels. The angels worship him. And lastly, we also see that when Michael, the archangel, confronts Satan over the body, he refers to the Father and says, uh, The Lord rebuke thee. But we see Jesus in action, clearly rebuking the devil himself. Himself. He doesn't, you know, he, he could refer to the Father. He could say, The Lord rebuke thee. But Jesus has all power and authority. And he doesn't need to. Because he is God. And I suppose, lastly, just to throw this in here as, as review, uh, there is nothing from church history, nothing at all. There was never anybody throughout history, uh, the Jews included, who ever believed that Michael was Jesus. All right? No early church fathers, nobody believe this, up until the 1800s when you started seeing the Millerites, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and the Seventh-day Adventists uh, bringing these types of teachings to the forefront. So today is a little bit shorter. Uh, that's it for today. If you guys would like to chat about this, you can catch me on uh, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and also now my worldviewpage.com, which is a great website to meet other like-minded conservative Christians. Uh, and so with that, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.